always loved browsing eBay. There's something thrilling about finding unique items or getting great deals on things you need. Little did I know the sight would lead me into a terrifying nightmare. It started innocently enough. I was looking for a new tent for an upcoming camping trip and found a nice one for a reasonable price. The seller had solid reviews, so I went ahead and bought it. A few days later, a package arrived. I excitedly opened it up, but was confused to find it empty. No tent, just an empty box. Strange, I thought. The seller must have forgotten to put it in. I messaged them right away to ask about it. Their response made my stomach drop. I'm so sorry, but I never actually had that tent to sell. Please just throw away the box. Now I was angry. This was clearly some kind of scam. I reported the seller to eBay immediately, but never heard anything back. Frustrating, but I tried to let it go. Until a week later, when another empty package arrived at my door. This time, it was from a completely different seller that I never interacted with. The note inside simply read, Oops. My heart started racing. Someone was messing with me. I upgraded my eBay account settings to maximum security and changed my password. That must have done the trick because no more empty packages showed up. I slowly started to relax again until I got an email with the subject line found you. The email was blank except for an eBay listing link. Hands shaking, I clicked it. It was a listing for a blow-up sex doll, except the photo wasn't of a doll at all. It was a picture of me, copied from my eBay profile. The description read, One needy man, slightly used. Desperate enough to buy from strangers online. I felt like I was going to vomit. This was not just a prank. Someone was targeting me. I deleted my account immediately and called eBay to beg them to remove the listing. The rep apologized, but said there was no record of that page on their site. Over the next few weeks, more bizarre packages started arriving. One was filled with dirt and worms. Another contained a dead mouse. Each time I'd frantically reach out to eBay for help, only to be told the shipments couldn't be traced. I started having nightmares of being stalked by an ominous unseen presence. Then I received an unmarked envelope with no return address. Inside were photos of me going about my daily routine, getting coffee, leaving work, even through the window of my home. Panic set in. I was being stalked by someone who had access to my address, my schedule, my entire life. The police got involved but had few leads to go on. I became paranoid, barely able to function. Late one night, as a storm raged outside, there was a knock at my front door. No one was visible through the peephole. I hesitantly opened it to find a large box waiting on my doorstep. My hands trembled as I brought it inside. The shipping label was blank except for a yellow smiley face sticker. Thunder cracked through the sky as I slowly peeled the tape off and opened the flaps. A putrid stench hit me, followed by an unearthly howl. I recoiled in horror to see a decaying dog carcass staring up at me. Then I heard it, a whisper seeming to come from inside the box. You should have paid me what you owed. I screamed and shoved the box away. This had to end. I was changing my name, moving far away, deleting every online presence. But just as I turned to leave, I came face to face with a figure standing in my doorway. Rain soaked and eyes wild, staring directly at me. It was the eBay seller I had reported months ago. You tried to ruin me, he hissed. Now I'm going to ruin you. He began approaching as I begged him to leave me be. But he kept repeating, you owe me. You owe me. I knew I had to fight back. I knew I had to fight back. I grabbed the box and slammed it into him, sending the rotting dog remains all over. He wailed, clutching his eyes, as I pushed past and fled into the night. So you see, I can never look at eBay the same way again. I still constantly look over my shoulder, worried he's out there searching for me. That harmless-looking sight opened the door to a nightmare I can't wake up from. I'd urge you to please be careful what you buy and who you buy from online. The next deal may be more than you bargained for. 
I've been selling on eBay for years. It started as just a hobby, a way to get rid of some clutter and make a few extra bucks. But over time, it became an obsession. I was constantly scouring thrift stores and garage sales, looking for valuable items I could flip online. Old toys, collectibles, vintage clothes. You name it, I'd buy it if I thought I could sell it. Business was booming. My little eBay store was bringing in thousands of dollars a month. The money was great, but it was the thrill of the hunt that really hooked me. That feeling when you spot a rare item that you just know you can sell for ten times what you paid. It's a total rush. Of course, with every eye, there's always a crash. My downfall began with a single negative feedback. I was shipped an order late, totally my fault. But the buyer didn't see it that way. He left nasty feedback, accusing me of being a scammer. I tried contacting him to make it right, but he never responded. That one negative feedback was like a crack in a windshield. Slowly but surely, more started accumulating. A four-star rating here, a neutral there. Suddenly, my perfect five-star reputation was in tatters. Buyers stopped trusting me. My sales dried up. I became obsessed with removing the negative mart. I would beg buyers to revise their reviews, offer partial refunds, do anything to get my ratings back up. But it was useless. The damage was done. In a desperate attempt to start over, I created a new eBay account. I built up some positive reviews before I started selling in bulk again. It worked at first. Sales were steady. But it wasn't long before buyers detected something fishy. How could a new seller have so much valuable inventory? Suspicions mounted. It came to a head when I sold a rare edition of Final Fantasy for $500. The buyer was convinced I was a scammer selling bootlegs. He left scathing feedback, warning others to avoid me. My account was flooded with harassing messages. People demanding their money back for items they'd received months ago. My account was shut down within days. This time, I decided to lay low for a while. No more selling. I needed to let the dust settle before trying again. A few months went by. Finally, I was ready to get back in the game. I set up a new account using a different email address. To avoid suspicion, I wouldn't list anything too valuable at first. Just some common items to build up feedback. It was going well at first. A dozen sales all positive reviews. I decided to reward myself with a trip to some out-of-town thrift stores and flea markets. I found an amazing haul. Vintage toys worth at least $5,000 all said and done. Excitedly, I listed them on eBay. My confidence restored. The toys sold faster than I could have imagined. I was overjoyed, already planning how I'd invest my profits. But something didn't seem right. The buyers had zero feedback, brand new accounts, and they all had variations of the same name, Matthew Lopezone, Matthew Olopestwu, etc. My excitement turned to dread. This had to be some kind of scam. Were they going to claim the items were damaged? Switch them out for fakes? I decided to just cancel the orders and take the items down. Moments later, I received an email notification. Someone had left negative feedback. Then another, and another, a dozen negatives in less than a minute. Then I noticed the usernames, Matthew Lopezone, Matthew Lopezone, Matthew Lopezone, Matthew Lopez too, on and on. Frantically, I tried to have the reviews removed, but it was too late. My account was suspended almost immediately. The little confidence I'd started to rebuild was shattered. I felt like I was trapped in an endless cycle, doomed to fail over and over again. In a last-ditch effort, I tried contacting eBay directly and explaining the situation, begging them to give me one more chance. The reply was swift. After review of your accounts, we have made the permanent decision to suspend your buying and selling privileges indefinitely. Just like that, it was over. A decade of wheeling and dealing all the time and money invested. Gone with the click of a mouse. Part of me wonders if it was all just a twisted game to them. Dangling success in front of me, then snatching it away. Reminding me that in the end, they're the ones in control. I still browse eBay occasionally.
but now it fills me with dread instead of excitement. You never know what's real and what's a trap, what you can achieve and what will be ripped away. The hunt continues, but for those like me, there's no reward at the end of the trail, only disappointment. Some lessons you learn the hard way. When it comes to eBay, I learned to quit while I was ahead. But by then, it was already too late. I've been selling on eBay for years. It started as just a hobby. A way to declutter and make some extra cash. But over time, it became an obsession. I was always on the hunt for valuable items I could flip for a profit. Garage sales, thrift stores, even digging through trash. Nothing was off limits. The thrill of finding a rare collectible or designer item for cheap was exhilarating. Most of my experiences were positive, but then there was that one night. The night that changed everything. It started off as a pretty normal evening. I was shipping out some orders from earlier that day. As I was sealing up a box, I heard a notification on my computer. A new eBay message. It was from a user called Redrum2023 and simply said, Do you still have that vintage Fendi bag listed? I thought it was odd for someone to message so late at night about an old listing, but figured they were likely in a different time zone. I checked and saw. I did still have that bag available, so I responded, yes, it's still available if you'd like to purchase. The user responded immediately. I'll take it. Five hundred dollars. I was stunned. The bag was nice, but I had only listed it for fifty dollars. A quick search showed similar bags going for around two hundred dollars at most. This seemed too good to be true, but money talks, so I wasn't about to ask questions. We completed the transaction, and I packaged up the bag. As I went to print the shipping label, I felt a chill down my spine. The buyer had used the name Robert Welsh and shipping address of 666 Killington Road. Probably just a coincidence, I told myself as I taped up the box. The next morning, I drove to the post office with the package. As I stood in line, a strange odor wafted my way. It was metallic, almost like blood. The receptionist noticed my crinkled nose. Sorry about the smell. Plumbing issues, she explained. I dropped off the package and thought nothing more of the strange scent. A few days later, I was surprised to see another message from Redrunt. 2023 pop-up. The bag arrived. Thank you. I'd like to buy more items if you have them. Over the next two weeks, Redrum 2023 purchased thousands of dollars worth of merchandise from my eBay store. Everything from jewelry to shoes to electronics. The packages kept going to that 666 Killington Road address. I'll admit, I got greedy. The money was coming in faster than I could keep up. I should have realized it was too good to be true. But all rational thought went out the window once I started raking in the cash. Soon I began to run out of inventory to sell, so I took more risks. Knocking over donation bins behind thrift stores, stealing packages off doorsteps. Anything to get items to flip and sell to my new golden buyer. Morals went out the window in favor of cold hard cash. About a month after that first transaction, I received an angry message from Redrum 2023. The last few shipments have been disappointing. I expect better merchandise going forward. I expect better merchandise going forward. I was panicked, worried I would lose my biggest customer. So I got reckless, breaking into houses and cars to find valuables to sell. I ended up going back to the first house I ever robbed. It was a regal old Victorian mansion on the outskirts of town. The owners had been on vacation for weeks, so I figured it was safe. I broke a back window and climbed inside, my flashlight guiding the way. The place was filled with lavish antiques, paintings, jewelry, jackpot. As I was loading up my bag with loot, I heard the floorboards creak behind me. I turned and saw a hideous, decaying figure staggering towards me. My blood ran cold. The putrid smell of death filled the air. The homeowners must have returned, and I'd been caught red-handed. I sprinted towards the back window to escape, but felt bony fingers grasp my neck. I was thrown against the wall with inhuman strength. As my vision faded, I heard a raspy voice whisper, We don't appreciate thieves around here.
Everything went black. By the time I came to, it was morning, and I was lying outside near the road, covered in dirt and dried blood. My whole body ached. I stumbled home, terrified at what awaited me there. Sure enough, my house had been ransacked. Furniture overturned, belongings strewn everywhere. And on my computer screen was one last message from Redrum 2023. Our business is concluded. The lesson has been learned. And payment has been extracted. I never sold another item online after that night. I wanted nothing to do with eBay or the evil I had unwittingly invited into my life. To this day, I still don't know what really happened at that old mansion. All I know is the thirst for money can make you do wicked things. I've always loved antiquing and thrifting. There's just something magical about finding unique vintage items or old treasures at bargain prices. Most of my furniture and home decor comes from local thrift stores and estate sales. But lately, I've gotten hooked on scouring eBay for deals. Last week, I came across a listing for an antique dollhouse. The photos showed an incredibly detailed Victorian-style dollhouse, complete with intricate woodwork, wallpaper, and miniature furniture. It looked to be in near-perfect condition, and the seller was only asking $500. I immediately hit buy it now without thinking twice. I couldn't believe I was getting such an incredible deal. The dollhouse arrived a few days later. I excitedly opened the large box, digging through the packing materials until I uncovered the prize inside. As soon as I laid eyes on it, something felt off. The house in person looked nothing like the photos. The wood was dull and worn. Entire pieces were missing or broken. The charming wallpaper was peeling and faded. It was as if I had received a completely different dollhouse than the one pictured. Confused, I checked the listing again. The photos still showed the bright, cheerful Victorian dollhouse I had fallen in love with. Had the seller accidentally sent the wrong item? I messaged them politely, asking about the discrepancy. No response. I tried contacting them again the next day and still heard nothing. Starting to get frustrated, I left a negative review along with photos of the dollhouse I actually received. I said I wanted to return it for a refund since it was clearly not the same one shown. Suddenly, the seller responded with a short message, no returns. All sales are final. What? I angrily replied that they had obviously misrepresented the item and I felt cheated. The seller then had the audacity to accuse me of trying to pull a scam by sending back a different dollhouse than the one they'd sent. Of course, they refused to provide any evidence that what I had received was the correct item. I reported the seller to eBay, but they said there was nothing they could do without proof. I had been deceived. I even considered going to small claims court, but I knew the legal fees would end up costing me more than I had lost. In the end, I was stuck with this worthless, dilapidated dollhouse. I tried reselling it myself on eBay, but no one was interested. I couldn't even donate it, so the creepy thing sat gathering dust in my basement. I wanted it out of my sight. Then I noticed something that sent a chill down my spine. The little doll family that had come with the house was slowly moving on its own. Each day when I checked, they would be in different rooms or positions. At first I thought it must be a trick of the light, but one night I saw them circling the living room, carrying tiny candles. No one would believe me, so I installed a webcam to record it. Sure enough, the video showed the doll family walking freely about each night. Sometimes they seemed to stare directly at the camera. Their eyes followed me when I came down to the basement. It was terrifying. I had to get rid of this haunted dollhouse. I decided to take one last crack at selling it on eBay. Only this time, I told the whole creepy story in the listing. I included screenshots from the security footage, so people knew this was no joke. Surprisingly, I got a bid almost immediately. A few days later, it was gone. Some occult collector had paid good money to take it off my hands. Part of me felt guilty passing this nightmare dollhouse along to someone else. But at least it was out of my house. I'll never thrift shop for antiques again without seeing them in person first. 
and I've learned to take eBay listings with a grain of salt. You never know what terrors you might unwittingly invite into your home, especially when the deal seems too good to be true. I'm just glad I escaped with my sanity intact. Or did I? For all I know, those vacant doll eyes are still watching me, plotting their next move.